Hey everyone, welcome back to Roadside Coder. So today we're gonna learn CSS Flexbox in one single video, including its properties such as flex direction, which is used to control the flow of container. We're gonna learn how you can place contents according to you by using properties like justify content, align items, and many more other properties like flex grow, order, flex shrink, flex basis, and flex wrap. After learning CSS Flexbox, you'll be able to design your websites faster and in a more efficient way. So let's get started. Let's start by creating our HTML file, which I'm gonna name index.html. So inside of it, we're gonna give an exclamation mark and press enter. So you see, we get this uh, boilerplate of a code for the HTML document. And we're gonna create uh, create another file called style.css where we will write our CSS code. So let's include this inside of our HTML. We need to give the path over here and here we go. So let's run this file. I'm gonna run it by live server. So if you don't know what live server is, live server is a VS code extension. You can go over here and uh, type live server and just download it. Uh, I mean, install it from here. All right, so looks like our HTML document is running. Let's type hello and save it. Yep, hello is there, uh, but we need to provide some initial styling to remove this default margin over here. So I'm gonna go to style and type asterisk and margin will be zero. So here we go. All right, let's create some div for demonstrating our flex box. So I'm gonna create div.main. So this will be our main container and inside of it, I'm gonna create five different containers with the class name of box. I'm gonna give it, give each of them a number. Let's save this. Here is our div. Let's give some background color to the main div. Background color, we're gonna select from here, a whitish color. Let's save this, yeah, looks good. It will help us identify our background. And for the box class, what I'm gonna do is I'll provide them some padding of 35 pixel margin of 10 pixel let's give them color of white and some background color of orange whoops orange red let's see how that look yep that looks pretty i'm gonna increase the font size to 30 pixel there we go all right so let's get started with our flex box so how do we activate the flex box in this main container? So the main container which contains all of our boxes, I'm gonna go over here and type display flex. And instantly you see all of the content is aligned in the row. So this is because the it has a flex direction property which is set to the row uh, value by default. So flex direction, if we type row, nothing will happen because it's the default property. But as soon as we write column, You'll see it has again aligned in the column. All right, cool. So I'm gonna set it back to row. Now, when we set the flex direction property to row, it has two axes. One axis is the main axis, which is currently the horizontal one. And the other axis is the cross axis, which is the vertical one. So when we set the flex direction to row, the horizontal axis is our main axis. This black, I'm gonna denote the main axis with the black color. So as soon as we set the flex direction to column, so we can switch these both arrows. So this is going to be our cross axis now, and this is going to be our main axis now. Now I'll explain you what the main axis and the cross axis role is. Okay, first of all, I need to convert it back to the row. All right, here we go. Let me remove these arrows. Now, what do we do if we want to align all of these boxes in the very center of this parent div? I'm gonna go over here and type justify content to center. There we go. It has the equal spaces on both sides of it. Now when we change this, now let's see by pressing uh, CTRL space, we can see all of its properties over here. You can see that it has bunch of properties. 
So let's try, let's say space between. So what space between does is it allocates the equal space between all of these divs. So let's say if the space is x between these. So x, 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 all of these spaces are of the value x. So let's change it to space around. So what space around does is it provides equal spaces to the left and right side of it. So here and here, here and here. So there we go. This is a space around and when we, when we type space evenly, watch what happens. It has provided equal spaces to all around these container. Another property is flex start. When we type flex start, it gets aligned at the very beginning. And when we type flex end, it's gonna be aligned to the very end of the div. Now there are more flex direction properties such as row reverse. If we type reverse, you can see it has been reversed. For, oh, first of all, let me remove this. And let me type row. Now you can see this is a normal condition. And if we type row reverse, you can see it has been reversed. One, two, three, four, five. It is, it's starting from this side, from the reverse side. Now we're gonna have a look at a new property called align items. But for that, let me just uh, make one of these divs bigger. So I'm gonna go over here and let's give the second div another class of B2 denoting box two. So let's give this B2 some styling, some height of let's say 100 pixels. Now watch what happens. I only increase the height of this one particular div and all of the divs got stretched. It's because of this property, align items. It's by default set to stretch. So it's not gonna change anything. But as soon as we change it to center, watch what happens. Now all of these divs has been aligned to the very center and in their original height, except of the B2 div. So what other properties do we have? Similar to the justify content, we have flex start. Here we go, they all went to the start. And as you must have guessed it, flex end. Here we go, they all got aligned to the very end. So when we set the flex direction to row, what happens is this is the main axis. So only on the main axis, the justify content property works. And only on the cross axis, the align items works. So if I, uh, let's say, change it to the column, so the main axis will be from top to bottom and justify content property will work on the top to bottom then. So we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. Let's remove that. So another property of align items is baseline. Now watch what happens. It has aligned all of the boxes with respect to the text inside of it. So if I increase one of these texts, let's say for the third, if I'm gonna give it, or maybe the fourth one, B4. I'm gonna give it B4 class and come over here. And font size, let's say 50 pixels. Now watch, it has aligned them to the respect of their font size or the font alignment or the text alignment, I mean. Now let's uh, change our flex direction to column. And let's save this and I'm gonna remove all of these properties from here and this font size. All right, similar to the row. Now the main axis has gone over here. The main axis is over here and the cross axis is over there. Now if we try to use the justify content or let's use the align items first Let's use align items to center. Watch what happens. They all got aligned to the center because it's by default was the stretch and now it's center. Now over here also, we, I can give flex start or flex end. There we go, it all works fine. Now in the case of row, it was working from top to bottom. Now the cross axis has been changed. It has been uh, from left to right. So it's working with respect to that. Now what if we want uh, all of these to align at the right side, but for this second box, I want it to be on the left side. So what I can do is I'm gonna go over here and align self to flex start. 
So I've given one of the container a flex start property. So it has changed from there to over here. So similarly, I can give it to B4 as well. I'm gonna give it a line self to let's say center. Now only this div has been aligned to the very center of the container. So you see this is the power of flexbox. Now I'm gonna remove this flex direction column from here. Yeah. And now our cross axis is back to vertical and our main axis is back to horizontal. So let's discuss another property called order. So what is order all about? Let me remove these properties. So by default, the order of all of this div is set to zero. But as soon as I, let's say if I go to the fourth box and type order to minus one, watch what happens. The fourth div went at the very start of the container because all of these are, are having order zero, but it is having order minus one. So let's go to the uh, div two and let me give it order of, let's say one. One. Now it is placed at the very last of the container. So this is the power of order property in Flexbox. So let's discuss another property, which is flex grow. So if I go over here and flex grow, I'm gonna go over here, type flex grow and type one. Watch what happens. The second div has taken all of the available space in the container and have pushed all of these boxes to the other sides. So let me give B4 as well, flex grow. Now they both are taking all of the available space in the container. Now if I try to shrink this screen, watch what happens. You see, these boxes are resizing themselves according to the screen size. All right, so I'm gonna display another property now called flex basis. So what flex basis allows us to do Let's say if we want, uh, let me remove this property first. Let's say if I want 20% space of this container. So I'm gonna go over here and type 20%. You see, it has given us the 20%. We can give it a value in pixels as well. So let's say if I want 50%, here we go. So ju and just like flex grow, if I shrink this container, there we go. It will get responsive according to the screen size. So what if we don't want this container to get smaller according to the screen size? So let me give it, uh, let's say 200 pixel of width, yeah. And I'm gonna give it a new property called flex shrink. So flex shrinks default value is one, which allows us to get shrinked. But if we set it to zero, watch. It doesn't get shrinked. It uh, just overflows the boxes out of the container. Now there's one shorthand property that you can use to write all of these three properties together. And that property is flex. So let me just comment all of those three out. Here we go. So we can write flex and the first value will be for flex grow. So let's type one. Let's just type flex one. Let's see what happens. You can see that uh, second div has grown to its full potential. Now if we type zero the second one is for flex shrink so let me just shrink it okay it has the flex uh, grow property now so it won't be able to work so let me just do this so the third one is the flex basis so for the third one let me just give 20 percent and you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set flex grow property to zero now let's try this out you can see it's not getting shrinked if I type like 300 pixels, it has grown much more. And now you can see the contents are being overflowed. So this is the shorthand property that you can use instead of writing all of these three. Now let's create some more divs. Let me create these 10 divs and I'm gonna give it six, seven. Oh, there we go. Now you can see all of these divs are getting overflowed out of the container, but we don't want that. We want them to come on the next line. So what we will do is remove this, remove this as well. And go to the main div and type flex wrap. 
and I'm gonna type wrap. Now watch what happens. The divs got wrapped to the next line. Now if I type, let's say in B2, if I type flex grow to one, you can see it has taken the remaining available space. And if I am just decreasing the size of the screen, you can see they are adopting according to that and get and getting wrapped up in the next lines. So this is the flex wrap property. And let's see, we have a wrap reverse property as well. So it has reversed all of the content of this container. There we go. Now for the next property, I'm gonna need to increase the size of this main div. Let's say height be 500 pixels. There we go. Now you see there's a space between these. It's because of the property called align content, which I haven't told you up until, up until now. So it's set to stretch. It's set to the stretch, but if you want them to be in the center, we're gonna go ahead and type center. There we go. And we can type just like justify content in the space content, we have options like space between, space around, and flex start. And you guessed it right, flex end. So all of these properties are available in align content as well. So now that we have learned all of these properties of Flexbox, I'm gonna go to my browser and type Flexbox Froggy, which is an awesome interactive game to learn the Flexbox online. So in this game, as the instruction states, a game where you help Froggy and friends by writing CSS code, we have to help this frog get onto his leaf by typing Flexbox code, basically. So the, here are the instructions. So let's try them. So according to what we have learned, we want to want this frog to get on this leaf. So what can we use? We can use justify content and flex end. So let's type justify content flex end. There we go. We got it. Let's move to the next puzzle. So in this one, we need to align them to very center. So it's easy. Justify content to center. Easy. Whoops. There we go. We crossed this one as well. Let's move to another one. So what are we going to do over here? You can see there are spaces between these leaves. So my guess will be we're going to use space around maybe. Let's try. Here we go. Next level. Here we need, yeah, this one is easy as well. We're going to have to do what? Space between. Space between. Yeah, there we go. Next level. So we need to uh, get it down vertically. So we're going to have to do is align items align items to flex end so that it comes to the very end flex end there we go so this was flexbox froggy i would highly encourage you to go to this website and try this game out it has a lot of fun and interactive levels which you can use to learn flexbox so if you like this video just give it a huge fat thumbs up by clicking on the like button down below and subscribe to the channel because in the next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all of these flexbox properties that we have learned today to create a responsive navigation bar. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.